Hi, Sonia here. Um, I thought today I would do another abstract uh, sketchbook process video because that's what I kind of want to work. Um, this is a sketchbook I want to work in uh, this morning. And I did a process video yesterday where I showed um, some pages of this sketchbook. I just also did yesterday, after saying that I didn't want to use wet watercolour, I did go quite heavily in for this spread with the Japanese watercolours again and actually I mean it was getting I felt like this is probably as wet as much watercolour as I wanted to use on the page it has made it really um buckly and yeah but I just I like to break my own rules so there we go um, and also with this spread, I've pre-prepared it with some acrylic paint that I'm trying to get rid of. I just wanted to show you if you are ever in that position where you've got paint and you want to like use it up. The other thing I like to do is then pre-prepare a load of uh, sketchbooks or pages at once. So this is my um, other sketchbook project, the loose re reusing this old sketchbook project. And I've prepared this for a spread to complete. Um, in the future and then because I was on a roll sometimes I don't really have uh, uh, snippets of um, paper or abstracts you make this was watercolour underneath but I just wondered if I like sort of glazed on top with this yellow again it makes another surface for either a drawing or using for collage and the final thing before I'm going to uh, make the process video is to show you this little for anybody who's really starting out with abstract i used to be really hesitant with it but um sometimes my advice actually with abstract is to get a really large sketchbook if you can but maybe if you don't have for whatever reason you've got a um, little a tiny sketchbook you that's not great paper for drawing then this is another fun project i have ongoing where i just make it it's a tiny sort of a small sketchbook i saw it on instagram and i don't know the artist it kept being shown to me on like the explore page some collage artist that was doing like a small collage a day so again here's another achievable hopefully quick project idea okay and the other positive news is i have a new microphone so hopefully when i do voiceovers the audio will be better because i do appreciate that um on reflection sometimes my laptop struggles to cope and it really does sound like it's about to take off in the background so uh, uh, as I'm meant to be also making some videos for an arts charity I thought this is a good time to invest so fingers crossed let me know if it's improved audio okay so here is the video of this particular sketchbook spread it's sped up two and a half time, uh, I think it's two times. And so in real time, this took me 12 and a half minutes to um, complete. Uh, essentially, it's a very similar process to the one I described in yesterday's video. Um, so I'm going to try and just highlight, talk through some general tips and um, just have a sort of a chat really. Just to say this particular bit you see me uh, sticking in, that is a, um, what's it called, a paint tester sheet. Like I have sometimes really cheap paper that I just test pens and paints on. And I like to keep them because in the past I've also used them as backgrounds for portrait sketches. But at the moment they're, I find they're quite fun to stick into um, abstract sketchbooks or when I'm making abstract work. And Another thing that I wanted to talk about is I'm trying to use like use up or test out materials that I've had for a long time. I'm I want to point out those Conte crayons. They are really ancient. Like I think they might be 15 to 17 years old and I got them when I was I think I'd signed up for like a life drawing class because um someone had recommended them. And I use them a little bit, but I've struggled to use them since. And they're sort of just sitting around in a drawer. So one of my ideas, and maybe something that you guys might find um, helpful, is to think about like rediscovering these materials, using them, or maybe just donating them. If I really find that they're 
they're not useful in the work I'm creating now, maybe give them give them away to charity just because I'm I mean someone else might find them useful. I think I I feel like I really should re rediscover this medium as well though and I'm sure maybe it's just also an issue of being able to use fixative with them but um but interestingly they do work on top of this uh, prepared acrylic page so that was um and I sort of tried smudging it in to get that sort of purple tone as well uh however I then go back to my trusty oil pastels these neon oil pastels have been a really good find for me and I think definitely well, I'm trying not to like buy new art supplies. If these run out, this is something that I do use in a lot of different work. So that's something I would restock. I can't remember. I think they might be gallery. They're a pretty reasonably priced uh, brand on Amazon. But yeah, I mean, I just feel like you get a pop of colour when you use them in a page like this. And I like it against the yellow. Um so yeah, so again with this sort of uh, free abstract work, it's about just yeah trying out things that you wouldn't normally try because maybe it's breaking the rules or going against uh, your day-to-day -day practice. Here, oh, and the other uh, interesting, did, with this page, I was definitely try to grab materials that I thought I wonder if you can use them on a sort of this acrylic prepared background. Like, will it just because of if I put water based against against it, will it just be resisted and sit on top of the page? So these are like Crayola metallic markers. Uh, these are great. I really found these worked well in the pages. I think I'd got them for the kids, but they're not using them. So hey, let's let's use up our let's use what we have. Um, yep, twister crayons. Again, when they were very young, they used to draw with those. So I'm just mark making. Then I tried just normal felt tips, like kids' felt tips that are left. Um, so yeah, even that seemed to work. It might work on top of this page. It might be because actually I did add matte medium to this yellow paint. So there's more of a, it's not as plasticky as um, sometimes you get with thick acrylics. So, yep, yeah, just, I do think there's something fun about trying, trying materials um, on different mediums, mixing things up and seeing what you get. Because here I actually smudge it because it was a little bit, it did feel like it would resist, it was on top of the paint. Um, and yeah, gel pens, cheap gel pens from, I do like black against yellow as well. So obviously trying to pick up the contrast if you've got a pre-prepared background what's really gonna maybe stand out is what I was experimenting with um, and then yep shapes I feel like I'm going back to circles a lot and I need to look up the artist there's a abstract I mean there's Gillian Ayres isn't there and there's another abstract artist who did a lot of circle shapes um, but I can see why there's something just rather I just enjoy making that making that particular shape on the page okay and then I was like oh let's try watercolor on top of this acrylic and to be fair I'm going to see how it dries but you can see it does it wasn't it wasn't like when it normally gets absorbed into the paper uh, and then I was like all right let's finish this off with some masking tape um, the other fun thing to do is uh, using masking tape on pages just to add borders and a little bit of just uh, texture and the one thing I'm thinking is I do use masking tape for borders for um, you know when you're painting on like in your journal and wanting a border could I reuse that masking tape in these abstract pages because it seems a bit of a waste just peeling it off and then chucking it away okay and here is today's spreads uh, hopefully it might have given you some ideas for your sketchbooks uh, or motivation to get going. Um, thanks for watching and see you next time.